what is your assessment for FY23 as we go into FY23 at a time of uh, volatile commodity prices and disruption in supply chain? I think one learning all of us as corporates have is uh, we need to build resilience and agility into the way we work. Mm. You know, because uh, whether it was a pandemic or whether it's the war, mm. these are global events which we have no control of but has an impact, mm. has a local impact. Having said that, overall the sentiment is still positive. Mm. Uh, we have a CII uh, toned down the growth forecast a bit. We had originally felt it would be in the uh, 8.5 to 9.5 percent range. We are now saying it will be around 7.5 to 8 percent. Mm. Uh, so while it is toned down, it is still very strong. 7.5 to 8 percent growth makes us the fastest growing large economy. Mm. And that's higher than the growth that we had even before the pandemic. Uh, our members are quite positive. When we spoke to them uh, in March at the National Council, which was after the Ukraine war had started, of course, number one concern was commodity prices and inflationary uh, costs. Mm. But uh, overall, pretty much 70% of them said that they were going to spend more capex than they did in the past. There is a bit of turbulence, but uh, nothing which uh, can uh, or nothing which we expect to derail the growth trajectory uh, very significantly. More than growth, actually, as you mentioned, the concern here is this year is inflation. Now, we know how inflation will impact households and lead into their savings and consumption. How will it impact corporates? Will corporates be able to pass on all of their input cost increase to customers? At least some of it will be passed on, hmm. uh, may not be all. And then you also need to then look at it, uh, are the export markets which can absorb that. Hmm. So many corporates are looking at that. If mm. the domestic market can't absorb all the inflationary pressures, can export markets uh, absorb that? That is one thing. Second thing is, obviously, there will be some margin compression, mm. but uh, uh, it doesn't mean that you will make losses. Mm. You know, So I think that's the second part. To me, uh, corporates are looking at inflation with obviously some concern on input costs. Mm. Uh, but this inflation is also helping some corporates. For mm. instance, if you are in the commodity space, mm. high commodity prices is actually encouraging you to invest more mm. so that you can grow your capacity and capacity utilization is strong. Mm. Uh, uh, if you are a farmer making wheat, today that inflation is actually helping you, mm. you know, in some sense of the growing wheat that you are helping you. So, so there will be some sectors who benefit from higher prices, mm. uh, some sections of society which will uh, get impacted a bit more. But we feel that with the government's focus on infrastructure spend, the supply chain issues will keep getting sorted out a bit. The demand side growth will be strong. Yeah. And with more incomes going to rural economy because of uh, higher uh, food prices, uh, consumption which was fragile may recover. Uh, you know, and also with uh, many other high contact, contact intensive sectors like hospitality, travel, etc. coming back to restaurants. Uh, we see that household incomes will also get stabilized. As you said, if not all, some uh, corporates could see their margins being hit because they will not be able to pass on all of their uh, higher input costs to customers. So on one hand, you have some sort of hit on margins because of inflation. On the other hand, uh, while CapEx has picked up, again, will we see it will not pick up as much as the policymakers are expecting or you also were expecting. Another year where private sector capex is still not getting to pre pandemic levels will we see that this year or are you i think yeah, no we feel that the sectors who have announced a capex hmm. uh, uh, will continue to spend it's not accelerate like i said metals and mining hmm. uh, whatever capex they announced 6 months back they probably want to do more today right? uh, that is one other sectors which have announced capex are chemicals chemicals and the exports has been strong india's exports have been very strong Third is uh, electronics manufacturing, which is more linked to PLI and the potential mm -hmm. of the domestic market. Fourth is supply chains, where I was saying, uh, etc., which is also very strong because of uh, e-commerce and mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And then there are areas, newer areas like uh, the climate economy, mm -hmm. people investing in recycling, people investing in hydrogen, people investing in electrolyzers, whatever. So, you know, there's an expectation that, you know, PLI scheme will create jobs over multiple years. Although compared to obviously compared to 2020, the employment numbers have improved. And for this, since the government data itself is not that trustworthy, we are looking at CMI data. Uh, however, there's also a case where millions have actually left the workforce, not because they simply could not get after multiple years of trying, especially women. Now, while jobless growth is a charge that is thrown at many governments, this government, government is before it. 
how bad do you think the unemployment situation is right now and what more can be done from the government side and the private sector side so i think uh, the situation has been uh, uh, very tough for many uh, like you said migrant workers for the uh, women in the workforce etc uh, but i think few things are happening one is if you look at the data you know it shows actually that the employment in agriculture has gone up mm-hmm. and uh, while and i read an analysis it said that this is not default employment mm-hmm. it's not that i don't have a job so i'm going and joining my family in farming so there is actual employment which has gone up in agriculture because agriculture has strong growth so i think the pandemic has also allowed corporates to be very flexible mm-hmm. about the workplace mm-hmm. and today technology allows you a lot of flexibility mm-hmm. and which is a good way for us to include sections of society to get excluded very easily otherwise you know so i think that's an opportunity and i think many corporates uh, have continued with the flexible uh, policies uh, that they used during the pandemic even after the pandemic right so i think that's a possible the third area for us to work on is skilling yeah. i think uh, while we are uh, obviously and rightly so obsessed with education i think there needs to be a greater obsession with skilling in multiple ways one is sector specific skilling yeah sector specific skilling work needs to be done by the government etc but more importantly also uh, private sector needs to do more we should be willing to pay more for skilled people like we are willing to pay more for a good engineer i think we need to work uh, through our contractors etc to drive that uh, into the system we also need to do a lot of work in society to have greater respect for skills you know and uh, i think that's an important part of the solution to the job problem if you like this video share it and subscribe to business standard for more news views and insights log on to www.business-standard.com do also follow us on youtube twitter facebook instagram telegram and linkedin